Giants guys part two because the draft is so big we needed two shows not one two shows okay so that you are still listening to the Giants guys yes I haven't even left the room I haven't even left my desk no one's moved but we cut the show so you didn't get too bored or maybe you're out of the shower lunchtime's over your wife's driving you crazy you went outside to cut the grass whatever Giants guys part two post draft all right we're good everybody still look they're all still here they didn't go anywhere I'm still entertaining you. All right. So I'm moving on to, and we're going to kind of make this a little quick. I'm going to actually time you guys and keep you on the clock this time. Um, Mikey B, Solder versus Thomas. Um, who starts and why? You're they on the both, clock. They both start. Solder starts at left. Thomas starts at right to start the season. If you look at 2017, um, his last year in New England, Solder had a bad first half of the year and came on strong in the second half. He did the same thing with us in 2018. And this past year, it was just, it was a new quarterback getting used to Jones for a portion of the season. And, yeah, he had a down year. But um, I think the guy has, has earned at least an opportunity to start the year at left tackle, and Thomas will be the right tackle. Um, hopefully the year goes that way. And then at the end of the year, um, we can slide Thomas to left. And then the boy from UConn starts at right in 2021. Michael Stewart, go. Yeah, I think the same thing. I think, uh, I think you see Solder at left, Thomas at right. And unless the Giants totally debacle and are horrible, uh, then they'll make the switch. They'll move uh, Thomas at uh, left tackle. Uh, but I think it's going to stay that way. Uh, Solder at left and Thomas at right. Uh, Jeffy. All right, I'm gonna have some fun and just take the other side. Then let's let's put uh, let's get Thomas at left tackle because he's the future at left tackle. Let's let him get started, start laying the groundwork for his career. That's why we drafted him. Nate yeah. Solder needs a fire lit under his ass because of what he put on the field last year, and maybe this is gonna do it. I was sick of seeing people fly around the edge on his side. I don't want to see Danny Jones get his head knocked off. Put him at right tackle, and if he sucks, get the UConn boy in. Oh my God! You want to rotate three guys? <laughs> depth. We need depth. Depth. Okay, Spiro, please talk some sense into him. Well, so, <laughs> well, I, I was just gonna say I I kind of agree with Jeff, um, <laughs> but I have a different reasoning here. Now, so at first I would I would have said there was a very low percentage that Solder moves over to right tackle, but given how this off season has gone. You are going to make Thomas relearn the right tackle spot. Or, you know, he, he only played as a freshman at, at Georgia, and that's it. You want him to come into the NFL, relearn how to play right tackle when his head's probably going to go a mile a minute. Solder has played right tackle in the NFL already. With the uncertainty of this offseason, maybe you just slot Thomas right into the left tackle where he doesn't have to learn his different stance, and you just let take as much guesswork out of it as possible. Let him play the position he knows. Move Solder, who's a veteran, knows the speed of the NFL, knows the, uh, you know, the offense probably that that um, probably better in the terminology he knows better than Thomas would. You you get him at right tackle and you let him battle it out. And if he starts sucking, you you put him on a bench again. But I'm I'm gonna go with Thomas to left tackle for the ease of transition. Spiro, don't worry about the learning stuff. The guy plays the piano and stuff. He's oh, you're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> He's cerebral. Yes. Mikey B? I went. Wait. Oh, you watch, right? I don't know. I, I think you're all wrong. Okay? I, I think you're all wrong for multiple reasons. First thing is the game is built on economics. Okay? They're, they're not about to put a $19 million tackle on the bench. They're not about to cut a 19 uh, – cut them. And what's, what's the dead cap money? 13? 13. 13 yeah. this year, yeah. You're definitely not cutting them. Yeah, they're definitely not cutting. They're not eating 13 million. You're also going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt because Michael Mikey B nailed it. He came in the first year with the Giants and he was not used to Eli and how he did things in his first half of the year stunk, right? And then he had a good second half. Last year he had a lot on his plate. I I'm sorry, I I I completely get it as a dad and stuff. I mean, things happen, man. And like things are bigger than football. I'm not making an excuse for the guy. But you know what? There's a lot more than football, and he's got he's got a sick uh, sick son, from what I understand, and 
probably had a lot. Listen, I don't know how easy it is to play football when you've got something heavy like that weighing on your shoulders. But, um, you know. I don't disagree. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm just saying, like, I just, when you got something that serious weighing on you, like, almost everything else doesn't matter. You know, as much as you're going to work, you know, I don't know how much you're into it and how much you're not, you know. But economics says the guy starts at left tackle and he, he gets every opportunity um, to play left tackle. Um, I'm sure as a expatriate, there is probably some connection there too with judge, you know, from, from those years and stuff. So, so I was going to play there. It, I, I, I hear you. I don't think it's going to be any problem for Thomas going from right to left adjustment. Yeah. I think there's going to be adjustment, but he's not going to have anything like, it's not like he played in the NFL at left tackle, right? He's going to be able to move. He's young enough, and pliable enough to be able to pull it off. So, um, now, Jeff is absolutely insane because he's talking about moving Pert in there at, at one point or something. That, that kid's never getting on the field this year. There's just no, <laughs> unless, unless, like, Tanny's back there or, or, or whoever's playing backup QB or who we saw, Colt McCoy. Like, I mean, so- Solder would have to play, like, Eric Flowers to, yeah. to, to lose the right t- tackle job, too. I'm just saying, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with giving him benefit of the doubt. The dude had a lot going on last year. And at one, he was the highest paid tackle in the league at one time, right? I don't know if that's been reset yet. So I'm okay, I'm okay with yeah, him starting Conklin, at left and let it play out. Yeah, yeah Conklin, I think, now. Yeah. Quick thing, guys. Soldier, his dead money drops after June 1st. So oh. he goes down to $6.5 million after June 1st. That's interesting. <laughs> that's so, noteworthy yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'll yeah, file that, that away that's what that's what they call a show stopper <laughs> yeah. um yeah that is really interesting man i would i'd still want the veteran presence yeah i think, I, I think we keep them i mean good, I think I good how, can you He's imagine playing. having like your your you know gates pert fleming and and thomas like i think no no, need- no you got to keep them this year you absolutely have to he's, keep them. he's staying all right. Um, I'm just flying through, keeping on moving, because part two can't be as long as part one. But we all, we all agree, you know, that, that, that Solder plays gets the opportunity. I'm more based on money, almost less than, than ability. It's like there's no way they're cutting a $19 million guy, and I definitely don't think they're putting a $19 million guy on the bench. It just, you know, it just doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but by, by game 10, if you need to move him the right tackle, it could be done. I mean, look, I love David Deal. He was one of the toughest dudes on the planet. And they moved him from, from tackle to guard, back to tackle, to the right side, to the left side. The dude did whatever you asked him to do it. And you're not talking about the most athletic guy in the world. You're talking about one of the hardest workers in the world, right? The dude just, like, willed himself to beat you, you know? And, you know, so if – and if Solder has that in him, he's a little, like I said, he's a little bit, he's not as, um, I don't think he's as, as raw and, and nasty as, as Deal could be. But if, if Solder needs to go to the right, I don't think it's going to be a problem. It might even benefit him, right? Take some pressure off him, right? Just keep in mind before we move on, the left side pass rush and the right side pass rush are interchangeable in 2020. You get guys that are just as good on the right than they are on the left. We obsess over left versus right. Is he a lefty pitcher versus a righty pitcher? Let me tell you, pass rusher-wise, the guy on the left is just as strong nowadays as the guy on the right. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, I remember Strahan got a bunch of crap for going to the Hall of Fame because he, he rushed from the opposite side. And, you know, Warren Sapp gave him a bunch of crap. So there's a lot of guys, you know, that get, rush both sides. So left tackle, right tackle, you still got to be good. Um, all right. So – uh, we did rant and rave. We did Thomas versus Solder. We're getting back into now. It's called stack the back. Uh, the second level of the Giants defense um, has 13 bodies. That is a huge amount of bodies in the DB room. That counts the safeties in the corners, right? Um, how do we see the shaking out and who's actually competing for a job? Because there's about three or four guys that are going to be bubble guys like Chandler and Haley and – and um, and um, you know, the new traffic. So, so, um, Spiro, I'm going to start with you. Um, who do we see starting as your base four and nickel, maybe dime? Like who are you seeing in the, in the mix? Is, is there any surprises or is this pretty much a set thing? 
So, I mean, I, I'm gonna. There's not gonna be any surprises off the bat on the outsides. Bradbury and Baker are gonna. Well, you, Bradbury, you just gave him all that money. Baker, you spent a first rounder on him last year. And I, I've said it before. I think Baker's gonna have a big bounce back season. Um, the system that Graham plays is going to be a lot of man. So Baker's going to excel in that. He wasn't good in zone. You put him in man, he's going to excel. Um, at the slot nickelback spot, I think Love is going to get the most snaps in the beginning. But I think towards the end of the season, it, while when you have Holmes you know, slowing down and re- knowing the system better, Holmes is going to take over there, and they're going to use Love interchangeably wherever there's an injury or, you know, yeah, anything else that's going on? Maybe there's a slip and play, but sure. I think Love's going to be that that rover guy. Um, yeah, right. And McKinney and Peppers are going to start on the on the back end. McKinney's smart. He's got high football IQ, and Peppers, you know, we spent big uh, big equity on him last year to bring him over for the, in the OBJ trade. He's going to get a chance to play with a real safety next to him this year, as opposed to last year uh, with Bethea, um, Chandler, Haley. Golden Beatty, a couple of these other guys, I, I, I honestly think they're all going to get cut. Um, and Williamson, the draft pick, is going to fight for that slot spot with uh, Holmes. Uh, Jeffy, um, what do you see? And, and who's, who's the odd man out? There's no way you could keep 13 bodies, okay? So there's a couple bubble guys in there already now that were kind of practice squad guys. But um, who, who's the odd man out here, and, and what do you see? Yeah, I'd like Spiro's take uh, pretty good, but uh, Mikey B is going to be upset because his B's are going to be broken up because I don't know uh-huh. where Bal- where's Ballantyne and Buell going because you got Bradbury in there, Baker's on the other side. Holmes is going to earn that slot spot, I'm telling you right now, okay? That'll be my hot take by the fourth game, that dude. Write it, write it down. <laughs> he's going to be there. Uh, Peppers and McKinney are going to be running the back. And, like, Julian Love, I think, is going to be that next man up filler depth guy because you saw what he flashed towards the end of last year. I know Craig is real big on Julian Love. Um, but, I mean, this is a good problem to have. For the first time in a long time, we have, we have more guys than we know what to do with. So I'm okay with that problem. And I see us getting real creative on defense. And just to touch on something you were talking about before, Craig, with missing the home run pass rusher, I think we're going to see something new from the Giants this year, too, getting real creative with blitzes and sending different guys. So we may see more guys with three to five or six sacks as opposed to that one guy, except for Carter, of course, with uh, double-digit sacks. I think they're going to have to get creative because we don't have that home run hitter. So. Well, remember uh, Super Bowl year 2011, I think Aaron Ross had – Handful of sacks. He was he good just, coming off that edge. <laughs> yeah, they blitzed him on the corner. Go ahead, go ahead, Michael Stewart. What do you got? Well, um, I think Bradbury and Baker are going to be your starters on the outside, and you got McKinney and you got Peppers at at safety. Like I said earlier, you got Love. I think Love's going to be your rover. Yeah. Uh, they're going to utilize him for the slot and safeties. Um, Holmes, you guys talk a lot about him. I'm going to look uh, look him up a little more. But uh, if he is definitely going to be that guy midway through the season to take over, you're looking at a deep team. You're going to look at guys like Haley's in trouble. You're going to look at like, um, Chandler. Beal. What's his name? Beal. Uh, Ch- yeah. Chandler's the, the, the third safety. Chandler and Haley got to be on the bubble. Yeah, oh, they are. Yeah, Chandler's on the bubble too. And I think I think Ballantyne, I liked him better on the outside. I liked him better than Beal. I thought he did a better job. So I don't know if he could do it again. But you may see a lot of packages with six defensive backs out there this year with the Giants. You know, with, yeah. with McKinney being your, being your little uh, blitzer guy coming in from the box. Mm-hmm. All right. Go ahead, Mikey B. What do you think? Because here's – but Mikey B, just so you know, I'm not, I'm not breaking up your Bs. I'm not breaking <laughs> up your Bs. But, I, but I'll tell you this, Mikey B, is – and I'm going to – and this is something that no one's going to like. If, if Baker if Baker doesn't have a good year to start off, I think Baker's going to get benched. I don't I don't I mean like there's a little bit of an attitude thing going on there about I don't understand the scheme or I'm sleeping in meetings. Well, now, yeah, Judge I, won't put up with that. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> with that, and I'll tell you right now, and you can write this on the paper, Jeffy, is that if it comes down to it, Love can play corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So go ahead, Mikey, be what you got. Yeah, so Haley and Chandler and whoever else, they'll be, <laughs> they'll be looking for jobs. All right, so Baker and Bradbury are starting on the outside. 
Beal and Ballantyne and um, and Holmes are going to get time in the slot. And I don't think Love is going to touch corner. Ten years ago, Perry Fuel had three safeties. He had Roll, Ancho Roll, Phillips, and Deion Grant in 2010. And that was their base package. I think that you're going to see a lot of three safeties. You're going to see a lot of Love, Peppers, and McKinney on the field at the same time. What does that do? Peppers and McKinney are very versatile. And Peppers right now, like, he doesn't have – any excuses. He's got to have a big year. And I think he's primed to have a big year because of the system he'll be in and what's next to him. So love is going to stay at safety. They're going to have a three safety look a lot of the time Baker and a Beal, or I'm sorry, Baker and, and Bradbury on the outside and the other guys in the slot. I think that it's going to be a lot of that. You're going to see a lot of nickel and dime packages. So uh, we're going to have a lot of D backs on the field and, and it's going to be a, a fast defense and in your face press defense. And I think that's the way to go. Yeah, I like I like that. I do like that a lot because um, I do remember those years well. Deion Grant played in the box better than anybody we've ever had. And I said, and I'm not trying to diminish McKinney or compare him to Collins, but like just for rangy, uh, fluid guys, Pepper and Love. Even though McKinney and Peppers are interchangeable because they could do the same thing. Yeah, Love's not a thumper. You know what I mean? No. So, so at that point, McKinney could play more in the box as your fifth linebacker picking the tight end and backs out of the backfield while Love and um, Peppers are in the back. So it'll be interesting. So, all right, so we're, we're all pretty much on the same page. But the only difference is I'm saying this is I'm not a Baker fan. I hope, I, like Spiro said at the top there, that he's going to have a bounce back here. I'm not so sure it happens. And if it doesn't happen, I think he's going to find himself on the bench. I think he's going to have a very short window as a first – you know, as a as a guy with nothing but excuses last year, everybody wipes the slate clean. Yeah, there's no scholarships. What's no, that? Scholars- no scholarships this year. If he if he ends up slumping, these the, the, these guys didn't draft him. Judge didn't draft him, so he'll he'll bench him for Ballantyne. I, I like Ballantyne the most. You know, as a backup, yep. Beal. You know, none of these Beal, guys no, have Beal. scholarships, and they'll get some time too. They'll, they'll, they'll get some yeah. Let, let's let's call let's call it what it is. Beal's going to be a bubble guy. Because Beal has been hurt for two years. Beal has showed nothing. I mean, I haven't even seen a flash out of Beal. He so, had that safety in the Dolphins game. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was a gift. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't I – don't, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You got 13 bodies in there. What do, we, what do they usually carry, eight? Well, and Ebner's going to be there as a safety, but he's only special teams guy, you know. Yeah. But he's technically a body there still, too. I counted him in the 13. Right, yeah. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about my favorite subject, pass rush. <laughs> <laughs> the Giants won – how many Super Bowls did we win, Mikey B? Um, four, but two recently. <laughs> so, I mean, semi-recently. Uh, uh, Mikey B, how, how did we win those Super Bowls? Getting after the quarterback. Yes, and I th- we did. I yes, think, we did. We had a yeah. pass rush relentless, absolutely damaging pass rush. We can go through a list of guys, okay? We cannot do that now. And I wrote here in the notes, and I'm sure you guys read it, the Giants won four Super Bowls with a nasty pass rush. Former GM, I don't like to say his name, Jeff, but I'm only going to say it once, Jerry Reese. Oh. Oh. Um, he ignored linebackers for almost a decade, just refused to get a starting linebacker. He was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get Greg Jones. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'll get uh, Carlos Emmons. I'll get, uh, I'll get these guys, right? Yeah, these, these guys that can't play, right? So we're kind of feeling the same thing with – and I like G- Gettleman, so there's no complaints about Gettleman, but he's kind of leaning that same way on like, hey, let me get a lot of DBs. I'm not really going to get a pass rush. So my question is – um, and, and the quote, and this was his quote, is that uh, we need sacks, just not from this one guy. So he feels, as uh, one of you guys said earlier, was maybe it was you, Jeff, is that we're going to get some sacks from maybe not the typical guy. Yep. So my question is, um, is, this, is, is the plan going to work? And where is the pass rush going to come from? Um, and, and Mikey B, I'm going to start with you. So I, I see the plan here. We talked about the secondary. I think that the beef in the middle between Leonard Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Davlin Tomlinson, your boy B.J. Hill, and then the addition of Blake Martinez are going to take care of the run. And whoever is playing that edge spot is going to have one thing to worry about, and it's getting to the quarterback. 
So you have Carter, you have Zimenez, maybe if Golden's in the mix, Fackrell. And I think that's all they're going to have to worry about. They're not going to have to worry about the run. The secondary is, is going to be improved and be able to cover guys and plaster guys a little longer. So I, I think that they're going to be able to make it happen, and, and I think that they're going to be able to get it done just from that standpoint. Michael Stewart, give it to me. Yeah, same thing. It's going to be by committee, uh, stacked by committee. It's not going to be somebody an all pro. I know that's what you would have wanted, uh, some kind of all pro guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah keep it, in mind, it works. <laughs> you know, keep in mind that not every team that wins a Super Bowl did it because of a pass rush. Uh, they had other strengths, you know. Uh, I mean, exactly. 49, I can name a few teams that didn't have premier pass rushers, but. Um, I think that's the Giants. That's going to be their thing. I think uh, defensive coordinator Graham is going to have a mix and match. He's going to try to confuse the other, other quarterback uh, team, and he's going to have different guys blitz, not always the same. It's going to be more by committee. So, so Spiro, can, can, can Fackrell step in and be the Marcus Golden? Because we know that two years ago we had 10, 10 and a half sacks um, uh, under that coordinator, right, Graham? Yep. So can, can Fackrell we'll find a little bit of the, um, you know, the old mojo? So two, two things to say here. Um, yeah, there won't be an alpha dog like everybody's been saying. Um, with what a good secondary does is give your pass rushers that extra half a second to a second. It's called the Vernon special. The, uh, your boy, Olivier Vernon. Those, those pass rushes that, that are so good will turn to sacks. Um, so, you know, you got a guy like Leonard Williams that missed a sack by a half a second. How many times last season? A good pass, uh, good secondary gives him just that extra tenth of a second to get that sack. I think Fackrell and Martinez combined, both coming uh, over here under Graham, both good good uh, pass rushers can get after the pass uh, the the passer. They can combine for about ten to fifteen sacks combined. I, I truly believe that. Then you got you know Carter and Zimenez. You hope for another you know ten plus sacks from them combined. You know, 15 plus if if Mikey B's prediction comes, uh, you know, comes up, and then you know Leonard Williams, I I think he's going to truly get you know four four to five plus sacks in this year. He was so close so many times last year. He could still get after the quarterback, and then you got the the other guys like I said, McKinney. He can come. I mean, he could blitz from anywhere. He could add another two three sacks. You got you know, Peppers could do the same, and then you you have about ten plus ten sacks from Dexter. Uh, Lawrence, Tomlinson, Hill, chipping everybody chipping in on the line. That adds up to around 40 sacks. That gets you in the middle of the pack. You know, that's what you want to – we're not going to have a, a, a fearsome pass rush right now. I think they get that guy next year, that, that truly fearsome edge rusher. This year we're piecing it together. Go ahead, Jeffy. Yeah, I mean, first of all, bring Marcus Golden back. Just make it official. You have a guy in-house that had double-digit sacks last year. Why are we looking all around, like, over the Sahara? Like, where is it going to come from? You had it. Just sign him, bring him back. He's going to cost you half as much as the shiny toys on the market. So just bring him in. That's number one. Number two, you got to remember, we're taking a page out of the New England's uh, philosophy here a little bit with how we're putting this team together. If I don't know if you guys played uh, fantasy football last year. If you had New England's defense, you were cashing in every single week because they had nothing but turnovers. They were scoring touchdowns. They're all over the place. New England had 47 sacks last year as a team. Are you telling me you wouldn't sign up for three sacks a game from your defense no matter where they come from? You don't care where they come from. It's yeah. about scheme, and it's about getting creative on defense. That's the angle we're going to have to take this year. It's going to be by committee. Hopefully Marcus Golden comes back, but it's going to be a committee. And then, uh, like Spiro said, next year maybe we add that young stud in the draft. I'll tell you what I see. Um, one goes uh, very – flies under the radar. Um, Martinez had eight sacks – um, over two years. Mm -hmm. So what people don't realize is he's actually great in a gap because he's got great explosion. He can beat a, but he can beat you between the guard and the center or stunt around around the guard. So you, you know, expect to get some sacks up the middle. And by the way, if they chip out for Martinez, it gives the big man Dexter Lawrence, you know, because he can move for a big guy. So he can get in there. So I think we're gonna be we're underestimating what Martinez brings up the middle with its pressure, you know, or stunting. Um, I think um, you know, I have to be on board. I really don't have it any other way to think that Fackrell's going to come back and do what he did because he's got someone that trusts him. He's got somebody that knows what he can do. So why not let him loose? 
you know? Um, so mm -hmm. I can see, I can see that. My biggest jump is going to be the minutes. Um, I, I, I said it on this show last week and the week before, I think the minutes stands, I think he had four and a half sacks. Is it, can anybody yep. confirm that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's it. Head. Okay. So at four and a half sacks, that's as a rookie coming from, you know, a one double A old dominion where they've never drafted a football player out of their life. It's the big dogs, right? So he stepped in, took over and, and had a great year. I really like the player. Seems like a really good guy in and you know, on the field, off the field. I think Zimenez jumps up to eight or nine sacks himself. Um, and I think Carter comes in as a situational pass rusher. I don't think they need Carter to set the edge and have 60, 70 tackles. I just don't. And we're all spoiled, but I mean, listen, JPP would have, would have 70 tackles, you know, average a year, you know, and, and a whole bunch of sacks. So it will be a little bit different of a year, but um, I think I'm, I'm in agreement with all you guys getting some from the safeties. I just wanted to mention that Martinez had eight, eight, eight and a half sacks up the middle, I think. So he might be able to pick up a little bit of the load. So, um, you know, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how that shakes out. All right. We got everybody there. Let's get into the, you know, and let's get, we're kind of cranking, let's crank through this one again. I'm putting you back on the clock. You got one minute. Who's snapping? Because right now we got one center in house and that's Pulley, which I don't have a problem with because when Pulley stepped in two years ago, he had Brown next to him. He had a decent year. Um, they gave him one game this year and they didn't like what they saw and they put P.O. back in. P.O. didn't get re-signed. He had some off-season surgery. They didn't re-up him. So we have one center in house. Um, uh, I'm going to start with with uh, with you, Jeff. Who's snapping? Uh, good question. We got a couple options, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something. Obviously, it's not figured out yet. Pulley is is currently the guy, but like we talked about before, maybe Shane Lemieux can can convert to center. I don't know if he's going to be a Week One starter, but there's an option. Uh, Justin Britt was released by the Seahawks today. I don't know what his price tag would be, but that's a center we could look at. They also um, released Luker. Mm -hmm him too um we have an undrafted free agent kyle murphy at a uri he played all over the old line including center so he's versatile um that's a long shot obviously he was undrafted but we have those couple options on there as of now it's pulley you know what what reason do i have to believe it's not pulley at this point unless ahead, Shane Mike, you, can you, quickly you convert. Uh, jeff jeff thinks it's pulley's job so he's the only guy on on staff so it, it kind of points that way you see you see gates or anybody jumping in here Gates will compete. It's Pulley's job, though. Spiro? Yeah, uh, my, my, my wish, my dream was, would be to trade for Alex Mack on the Falcons because they just drafted <laughs> Hennessy. But I, I don't think it's going to happen. So, I, I, I mean, Gettleman was talking up Gates a lot pre-draft. Uh, so, I, I think he's going to have a real shot at it. Pulley's going to start. Uh, I'm, I'm really worried that P.O. is going to get a, a real crack at this to come back because they're, re they're talking about re-signing him. And Wait, I, where did you I, see I, that? I, 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 that's the rumor that they're, they're, there's pretty much a guarantee they're going to resign him and give him another shot. So that's my, my, my last choice because we've seen what he could do and he stinks. I'm going <laughs> to rename the website um, NY Giants Pulley's Not Good. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Michael Stewart, you got something? Well, uh, right now, the, this is the last man standing, so Pulley has to be a man. Uh, they could go directions. I don't see a rookie coming in with le bad, with no experience like Gates taking over for that team. Uh, not right away. Uh, they could go out free agency. I, you mentioned Britt. I don't really like him. I think Paul is just as good as him. Um, they do have Cahill available, Ryan Cahill. He's older. But the guy was a pro bowler, and he's probably been in Pulley. I don't know if they'll take that route, but right now Pulley would be your guy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I like I like any of them. And if it's Pio, they're they're on crack. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. If that's what, <laughs> how it plays out. No, we can't do the job. Might be a great guy off the field, but he just he I don't know what it is. It's just, coming off an Achilles injury too. I, I yeah, I can't so, see it. You know, yeah, that's a year injury. There's no way. Even if they sign yeah. him, he, he, there's no way he could actually play with six with five months. I don't know. It's I not. Agree. Possible. Um, you're right. Uh, Gates and Pulley, um, and maybe you know your boy from Oregon. Maybe can you know get some snaps in. And you know what? That might be year two. It might you know it might be next year. Might be your guy, uh, Lemieux. 
right? We'll get a full year. All right, so we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm skipping over, I'm going right to the last section because we don't want to drone on too long. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> um, so, um, always the bonus round uh, blast from the past. We're gonna go around. It's basically the same thing we did last week, but we, because we were all in unison. Offense is always tricky because there's some people that like to go old school, some new school. So, blast from the past, the bonus round is the offensive Mount Rushmore. And Jeff, you cannot chisel two faces. <laughs> one. Okay. Yeah, that's a one. That's a one-time thing. One time. Okay. okay. If you, yeah, because that last week we gave you a mulligan on that. <laughs> but, but, no, I ain't gonna fly this time. <laughs> no, not gonna fly. Not gonna fly. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Michael Stewart, because I'm thinking you may you may set the table with a little old school. So I'm gonna let I you am. go first. I, I certainly am. Um, no. In no particular order, I'm just going to give you four, right? Yeah, any, any order. Okay, uh, Eli Manning. Okay. Okay, Mel Hine. Oh! You went, you went as old school as possible. Yeah, if you ever look at this guy's bio, you'll see why. Uh, Frank Gifford. Yeah. You're going double old school. <laughs> I'm going to go back further. I'm going to go back with that Roosevelt can I, can I, Brown. Oh. All right. Damn. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I, 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 oh. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Okay. We all right. All right. And Sims and a couple of guys from now nowadays, but those guys, I mean, you, I mean, obviously I didn't watch them play, but they, they were phenomenal players. I, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> oh, no, no. Listen. I respect everybody's opinion until until you know you tell me I suck, but um, <laughs> which I got a lot of on Twitter, by the way. Um, Mikey B, since you're the youngest pie cat in the room, yeah, or maybe, or maybe it's just your youthful complexion. <laughs> give, it, give, give it to me. We're gonna go with Roosevelt. Um, Roosevelt, <laughs> Roosevelt Brown, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt, now. <laughs> <laughs> Roosevelt Brown, Wyatt Tittle, uh, Phil Sims, and Eli Manning. I think okay. uh, I, I really wanted to um, – I wanted to throw – I wanted to throw Plax in there somehow because <laughs> I love Plax Daddy, but um, – Plax to go sweeping underneath Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then he shot himself in the leg. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those are my four. Eli Sims, Roosevelt Brown, Wyatt Tittle. Oh, quarterback heavy. <laughs> go ahead jeffy what you got yeah i go eli for obvious reasons i'm putting a monty tumor on mine yeah um he's an all-time guy he's a giants lifer he was just the ultimate pro you know proud to have him on your team so i love a monty tumor there i'm also right. adding phil sims yeah. so i'm going eli and phil sims too uh the faces kind of of those super bowls and i know jeff hostetler i can't carve more faces on there but i love that guy too um <laughs> And this fourth one is going to shock you. And he's my boy on Twitter. It's Larry Tynes, the second oh. all second all-time point scorer for the Giants. We don't get to both Super Bowls without him, especially in Green Bay, man. The balls he had to run back <laughs> onto the oh, field. Larry, that's pretty cool. Uh, and, uh, oh, I, I call him Larry. He, I don't know if he like Yeah, a special it. relationship. <laughs> yeah. He has a shout-out to, to Tynes, yeah. yeah. No, I, lo I love Tynes. Um, and that's my guy. He's going to round it out for me. We don't get there without his foot. Go ahead. Go ahead, Spiro. Break, break my heart some more. All right. Well, I got, I'm all over the map here because I, I, I don't want to do what everybody else did. So, I mean, I'm going to stick with Eli because that was, that's one of my favorite players of all time. But I'm going to put Bavaro in there. Just a mauler at the tight end position. That run where he had 16 guys just on his back <laughs> and just carrying them. He just set the tone all the time. Um, I, I, I wanted Toomer too, cause Toomer was, it was here for a long time and he brought it, you know, in those late nineties, early two thousands. And he was one of the reasons why we won that 2007 Super Bowl. Um, so I'm going to go a big game, Imani with that Denver, uh, catch that when we, they, we beat them, get awesome. that undefeated season over. And then the awesome. last one, I'm going to go with my boy, Chris Snee, uh, all nice. pro guard. <laughs> We would not have won those two Super Bowl, those recent Super Bowls without him. 
Tommy Coughlin's uh, brother, I mean, uh, son-in-law. <laughs> I, you know, he was an all pro, like I said, four time pro bowler, just consistent year in, year out. Um, he would have been a first round pick if, if, if the redraft happened. And uh, I just, just love my boy Snee with number 76 in the middle there. Good call. So it's, those are really good. That's all impressive because mine suck. <laughs> like, well, because here's the thing, like, um, I, sh- I struggled with the fact that, like, the guy I want to put on there more than anything, I couldn't stomach looking at him. I know who it is. It's Tiki Barber, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, I had him uh, and I crossed him off. I couldn't like, do it. Like, like, my thought was, like, like it. Like Tiki, man. Yeah, I'm, no, absolutely. He's, he's such a flaming bleep that yeah. like <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Can't. I mean, do it. I couldn't do it. Like, like the, the minute I had to start carving that thing, I'd be like, "Nah, this is all wrong. This is all wrong." It, Rushmore's outstanding gentleman. He's not. He's not. He's just not that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I struggled with it because so the no brainers, you know, are 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 Sims and Ela. Like, they're just to me, they're just no brainers. They're they're the captain. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're without them. Nobody goes anywhere. You're stuck with, you know, Bruner and Graham and Cannell and, and uh, you know, the rest of those guys. Um, so then that brought me to like, well, you know, we've always been known for defense. So where do you really go? So I stole a page. I stole a page out of Jeff's book. And I put Tumor on one side and Barrow <laughs> on the other. <laughs> I figured no. I thought any guy that looked like Rambo has got to be up there. <laughs> I get, yeah. That's awesome. I got to show you guys something. Cause for anybody that's uh, watching the video at home, I've got three best friends that I grew up with, okay? And we're still best friends since, like, first grade or whatever. And one friend always said he wanted to get Mount Rushmore tattooed on his leg or something with all of oh, our faces. No. When he got married... He got this created, and it hangs in my room of the four of us. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that, that's awesome. Yeah, so we all have that in our house. It's a, a canvas that that's we all fantastic. have for the rest you know, of our lives. You know what's funny, uh, and maybe I'm wrong here, but like, is your wife like, that's not getting in the house. <laughs> it wouldn't be allowed in any other room. This is my yeah, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I have, I have, uh, I have one of those. It's a little off topic, but have you ever seen the Rolling Stones tongue? Of course, yeah. <laughs> so the guy who drew that, his name is Ruby Mazer, and he did these lithographs about twenty years ago of bulldogs smoking cigars. Yeah. Right, yeah. and they're all, and I, and it's hand signed and everything, and I have it. My wife, I've had it for years. My wife's like, "Where are you gonna put that?" That ain't and making I'm like, it in. <laughs> I'm like, it's signed by Ruby Mazur. It's one of 200. It's literally a big white bulldog with a cigar <laughs> hanging out of his mouth. And it says, what you looking at? That's great. Yeah. That's so awesome. it reminds me of your, of your Mount Rushmore because yeah. it's like, you know, I can't hang it up anywhere. She, no, this is the like, only place for it. Yeah, she, well, would never, she would never have that in the room. <laughs> well, look, guys, uh, you've done a great job covering the draft. Um, you know, speed round here. Uh, you can reach me at NY Giants Rush. I'm sure you people know that. You've been torturing me all week. But by the way, shout out to all the new followers. We we picked up – I mean, it may be my account, but all these guys are attached to it and stuff like that. And they read everything. You know, we picked up a good 50 new followers this week. And Love you shout out, to you, shout out to you guys. I'm not always crazy manic like like I am. But I will defend myself and my opinions. But, it, but you know, here nor there, um, we appreciate – you know, everything, you know, the, you know, the following, the reading, these guys are great. Spiro, Jeff, Mike B, Mike Stewart, follow these guys. Um, you know, we hope you guys hang in there with us. I'm the only one that's usually a little abrupt. Most of these guys are nice guys, but I couldn't do it. Without them, so, uh, you know, uh, go ahead, uh, Jeff, give them out your, your, your Twitter and your, your stuff. Yeah, at Jeff Pilgrim 11 on Twitter. For any uh, new or old followers, feel free to reach out. Let's get the conversation started. Any topic you want, feel free to at me. I will not hesitate to fire back at you. They think I'm a nicer guy, but they're just, you haven't seen me ticked off yet. That's all. <laughs> You've got a high tolerance, unlike myself. Uh, M- M- Mikey B, go ahead. Uh, Michael Basile at MJB. Um, so certainly love to talk about how Dave Gettleman's getting crushed for no reason. 
But uh, with that said, I'll be I'll be taking a look at the the coordinators, an inside look at Garrett and uh, Graham in the in the coming weeks. Yeah, we'll we'll cover that next week, folks, on the Dave Gettleman hate that's completely absolutely unnecessary. Uh, Michael Stewart, just tell them where they can find you. Well, it's uh, at Golfer Bad is my uh, Twitter. And by the way, I had a ball, a blast doing day three on Twitter for most of the day. I had a great time with a lot of guys. And I think uh, Jeff, you were on there with me and Mike. Yep. I remember you uh, chiming in. And uh, I'm just going to just stay with some upcoming events, uh, maybe a little profile of certain players uh, until we get rolling with, spring, with the uh, training camp. Yeah, we may, we may slow down a bit, but, um, you know, we're always up for a good conversation. And, you know, I'm going to take Jeff's advice. And every time you guys start roasting me, I'm just going to send you to them. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Send Thanks. it over. Where, where can they find you, Spiro? Uh, at NY Sports Guy underscore SP, SPI. Um, yeah, I, I just a Mr. Glass half full kind of guy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always defending my boys here. Um, but, you know, always ready for a nice conversation. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for the, this next 2020 season. I'm going to be looking into how uh, the secondary is going to help this pass rush get back to a decent level um, on my next article. So, yeah, look out for that. Awesome. And just in case anybody cares, uh, if you go to the website, nygiantsrush.com, the store is open. You can buy hoodies, sweatshirts, T-shirts, stickers, magnets, whatever you want. Buy them. Spread the love. Right? Um, thank you for tuning in. We are the Giants guys. This is episode two of one, two. Um, and we appreciate you guys tuning in. So we are O U T out. Ah. <laughs>